Throughout the semester, we've talked about how drones can really bring a unique perspective into journalism if done correctly. And I think a really, really good example of that can be found in Philippe Rossman's uh, video from Cheryl Noble. Uh, he spent six years documenting the aftermath of the evacuation, and he did it in various ways. He did it with audio, he did it with a camera, he did it with drones. And at the end of the day, he really found out that his drone footage was the most effective. And after putting together a video of all of his various clips that he collected, the Wall Street Journal actually picked it up, added an intro to it, added some quick facts. And as of April 2022, it's got 1.7 million views on YouTube. It's been very successful. And one of the things I really liked about the video was the intro. Городской совет народных депутатов сообщает, что в связи с аварией на Чернобыльской атомной электростанции в городе Припяти складывается неблагоприятная радиационная обстановка. The reason why I really liked it is I think it sets the mood very quickly of that this is not a happy video and this is a very sad event that happened. And by using the slow orbit shot, I think it allowed the audience to focus more on the original audio, um, which is, I think is important because, you know, for example, if they would have used this Ferris wheel scene and the uh, footage is moving that fast and, and there's a lot more to look at, I don't think that intro would have been as meaningful as it was uh, to the audience. And when Grossman was putting together this video, there was one big challenge, and that is the video can't be boring. I mean, this is a four-minute video with only visuals. There, there's no main character to follow. There's not really uh, a lot of speech or dialogue going on. So I think that there was a big challenge of trying to keep people interested for, for the entire four minutes. And I think Grossman does a good job by using two different things. The first one is using uh, a variety of locations. Uh, he doesn't stay in one place, right? He goes from the carnival he uses city structures, uses the city at large, uses uh, the countryside, he uses uh, abandoned ships, he uses the port, he uses the nuclear facility. It seems like he's always kind of switching the place up to a brand new location. And I think the second thing that he did to make it not boring was a good use in a variety of camera shots. For example, when he's trying to showcase the classroom, he uses a reveal shot to show that this isn't your ordinary classroom, that this is part of a collapsed structure. And I think he did a really good job by using the reveal shot because it keeps the audience, uh, you know, catches them off guard and keeps them watching. And the second example I want to use is the orbit shot of the USSR sign on top of the rooftop. I think this is very good because by using the orbit shot, it keeps the USSR thing as the main object that everyone should focus on. And really, when you talk about this story, I think the involvement with the USSR is very important. Right, so by keeping things fresh, he did a good job of keeping the video interesting. But there was one thing he did not utilize very much that I think could have done uh, the video a lot more justice, and that's by adding more facts to it, right? It's a slow video. I think by adding the fun facts at the bottom like they did in the beginning, throughout the entire video, instead of the first 42 seconds, it would have really kept things interesting. It would have taught the audience more. Nonetheless, I thought this was a very interesting video that does really show uh, the unique perspective that drones can bring to journalism. Uh, the entire video, if you want to watch it, is in the link below. Uh, and let me know what you guys think. Do you disagree with what I say? Do you agree? Uh, and why? Uh, thank you guys for watching.